Welcome to Module 3. Today we'll be talking about carbohydrates and cell metabolism. Carbohydrates contain three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, in the form CH2O to the N. These are the most abundant biomolecules on Earth, and each year photosynthesis in plants converts 100 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates. This happens in the chloroplast, which is the component in the plant cell involved in photosynthesis. Now, the most, uh, the first thing you might think of when we're talking about carbohydrates is carbohydrates as an energy source. And that is their main role. They are the main energy source for our body. Uh, specifically, glucose, which we'll be talking about most in this lecture, is the only fuel used by your brain cells. However, carbohydrates can do a lot more than just provide energy. They also are structural elements in the extracellular space. These are hydrated molecules that will protect the cell from mechanical and chemical damage. They'll lubricate the cell surfaces, including lubricating skeletal joints, and they'll also participate in cell-cell recognition and adhesion processes. For example, the uh, your blood type is based on a different sequence of sugars that your red blood cells present. Monosaccharides are the simplest type of sugar. Again, the general formula is CH2O to the N, where N is going to be 3, 4, 5, or 6. So if we have an N of 3, we have an example here, glyceraldehyde. This is 1, 2, 3 carbons and an aldehyde group here on the end. Pentose is a five carbon monosaccharide, so one, two, three, four, five carbons. Again, this has the aldehyde group. Glucose is a hexose because it has six carbons. Um, other examples of hexoses are fructose, mannose, and galactose. There are two main uh, types of monosaccharides here, the aldose and the ketose. So they contain many hydroxyl groups. There are a lot of hydroxyl groups like this in throughout the uh, monosaccharides. However, the difference between aldose and ketose is in the functional group on the end. So this aldose has an aldehyde on the end and a ketose will have a ketone group in the middle. A ketone is just R bound to a C double bond O and another R group. Now, we've been showing uh, these sugars in their straight linear forms. However, in water, they actually form a hexagonal ring structure. So what happens is the straight chain actually binds together on, on the two ends to form um, what we call a uh, ring form. So in the ring form, our carbons are here. So this right here is a carbon. So for instance, remember glucose has six carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and of course this guy's number six. So every time you see a kink right there in the molecule, that represents a carbon. There are two forms of glucose depending on whether or not the hydroxyl groups are up or down. See in alpha glucose we have uh, hydroxyl groups going down, down, up, down, and in beta glucose we have up, down, up, down. So those are monosaccharides. Those are one sugar group. Now we're going to talk about disaccharides, which are two monosaccharides covalently linked, and they have a special name for the bond that links these uh, two monosaccharides into a disaccharide, and that is the glycosidic bond. And this is a dehydration reaction because we're losing OH and H, which of course form water. So here we have glucose and fructose joined together with a glycosidic bond, and this forms sucrose. So the name for this disaccharide is sucrose. Sucrose is just more commonly known as table sugar. Uh, here's another common disaccharide, uh, disaccharide lactose. This is milk sugar. If you hear somebody say they are lactose intolerant, that means they don't do a very good job at digesting this disaccharide sugar. And finally, we have polysaccharides. These are polymers consisting of chains of monosaccharide units. So in this diagram, each little hexagonal shape you see here is a six carbon sugar. You can see amylose is a straight chain polysaccharide, whereas something like glycogen is a branched chain 
polypeptides. So it has, or excuse me, polysaccharide. It has many different branches off of uh, each chain. And glycogen is actually the main storage polysaccharide of animal cells. So glycogen is going to be especially abundant in the liver and skeletal muscle. Um, in the skeletal muscle, you need a lot of energy quickly, so we get that energy by breaking off one of these glucose molecules on the end of glycogen and putting it through the process we're going to talk about next, which is metabolism.